I'm going to talk to you about heart failure. It was already mentioned that two years ago I spoke about the worst case scenario about women suffering from heart disease, a, a problem, a medical problem, which was neglected for decades. Now we are aware of the problem, so we are doing our best as cardiologists and doctors and other doctors to treat that. But heart disease is still the number one killer in, this, in, in the Netherlands as much as in the rest of the world. Many years ago, my, before I finished my training and became a cardiologist, my mother passed away at the age of 59. She died because of a stroke. And um, amidst of all my grief, she left me the legacy that I have to do one thing, turn my losses into gain. And that's what I'm doing. And whenever I come across a problem, which is the image of loss, I will try to turn it into gain, whether it's for myself, for my family, or for the patients who trust their life to me. One of the worst case scenario of heart disease is heart failure. It is a condition in which the heart fails to pump enough blood around so that you will feel good and be able to perform and to do whatever you want to. There are many causes of heart failure, but the most important one is that we, the, our, the vessels, the blood vessels of our heart, they become stenotic, so the heart has less oxygen to perform, and other cases are like hypertension as well. I'm not going to teach you classes. Today is another day, but I want to tell you that hope is on the way. The losses have been turned to gain. We discern two types of heart failures. One is the heart failure so-called with the low ejection fraction, and that is on for you on your left side, I suppose, yes, this is on the left side, uh, the, heart, the, the heart failure when patients become a very dilated and a big heart. It, is, it afflicts mainly male patients. The other one, on, for you on the right side, it afflicts women. And for many years, we haven't done very much to treat the women, and I'm not going to talk today especially about women, I'm going to talk about heart failure. And we don't know how to treat these women, so we have a lot of work to do yet. But what I'm going to talk to you about is the heart failure with the dilated heart. It has been studied well enough to know how to treat. And it is a, a, this, a, a very bad disorder because the outcome of heart failure is worse than many types of cancer. Only lung cancer has a more worse prognosis, more worse outcome. So we have a lot of to do, and in case you think this is a rare disease, it is not. But the five-year survival is only 30%. So we are working on it. It's not rare. 2% of the Western population of Europe and the United States are afflicted by this disorder. And as I told you, the prognosis is very, very bad. And in the meantime, while the patient is living, they might be admitted very often to the hospital, which make it a very costly thing, disease, disorder to treat. Some of them, they died suddenly, but the majority of them are sent to the hospital, referred to the hospital for further treatment. And it is also very costly. At present, it is estimated that about five million people in the United States suffer from this affliction, both men and women. And I think we don't know it exactly, but the figures in Europe, Euro, uh, European Union, are nothing less, are no less than that. The cost estimated by 2015 just two years from now, are estimated to be $45 billion. So it is very expensive. It is time to do something about it. And as you can see, the majority of the costs are because the patients are referred to the hospital. 
Now, many times, I don't care about money. I'm not a banker. I'm not somebody from the financial world. I'm a medical doctor. So my job is to treat patients properly and to make them feel better, and if possible, to give them a, lo give them a longer life, to add quality and quantity to their life. That is my goal. And there is no gain in being in the hospital, being hospitalized. So we have to do our best to keep them out of the hospital and if possible, in a good health so that they can live their life to their best. In the Netherlands, we now have about 17, 17 million people and uh, about 300,000 people are afflicted with this disorder. And every year, another 40,000 are added. So it is a huge medical problem, and we have to do, and we have to treat it. One of the reasons why this problem is growing is because people can live longer with heart disease. They survive a heart infarction, a myocardial infarction, or valve disease, but they live longer with a diseased heart. So that is one, and we're all getting older. Uh, it's now estimated that women in the Netherlands will become 84 years and men 81 plus 9. So we're getting older. So we have to do something about it. In order to treat this disease properly, science has created because we now say heart failure is like cancer of the heart. So we stage heart disease, heart failure, like we stage cancer and adjust treatment to that. And we try to do the best we can. To do so and to know which patient needs which treatment, there is a protocol I launched in 2005 in Leiden. It's called the Mission Heart Failure, so that every patient got his own tailored therapy. And in the beginning, it is expensive, but at the end, not only the patient has a better life, but it's far more cheaper because they don't enter to the hospital. So there is a lot to do, and there is a lot of gain to, to achieve. We have decided a lot of surgical treatment to treat the patient as, pos as good as we can. The gold standard is heart transplant. You take out this, the sick heart and you implant a healthy heart. But as you all know, that is, of course, the biggest solution, but we have shortage of donor organs. And I'm not going to discuss the problems about donation, organ donation, because that is for another uh, time. And, but we, uh, the results are very good, but yet we cannot help a lot of peop, uh, people because of the organ uh, shortage. The survival with the northern heart is very good. But yes, you have nothing with that message if you are waiting and waiting and waiting and you will not know whether there will be a heart available for you in time. So we have seen that on the waiting list, one out of five patients die. So the next step was to make sure that they will survive until there is an organ available for them. So what we have invented is what we call the ventricular assist device. That is a small pump you can place on the heart which, uh, which support the function of the heart so that the patient is not admitted to the hospital and the patient can live long enough until an organ is available. Well, the results were very good, but as I told you before, we cannot treat everybody with an, another heart, with an, a heart transplant. So what the next step I decided in 2009 would be, would it be possible together with my team, would it be possible to all those tens and hundreds of people suffering from this affliction, who are no candidates for transplant, who cannot be treated properly, would it be possible to give them such a pump instead of another heart? So we're still doing all this, and now we are placing a small pump. It weighs only 140 grams. We place it on the heart, and it supports the circulation, and it extends the life of these patients. Not only it extends it, but they get quality of life. They can do whatever they want to do. They can travel, they can play golf. It's not, I like golf, but just, I'm not treating them to play golf, but I want to say they can do what they want to do. So uh, this is the way 
the pump, it goes. On the sick heart, the surgeon makes a hole. I'm a cardiologist, I'm not a surgeon, but I just take the decision who is suitable for this uh, procedure. The surgeon makes a hole in the heart and place the pump on the heart and connect it with the aorta. In order that way, we bypass the sick heart and no longer depends on the function of the heart, whether it pumps properly or not, because it is fully supported by the pump. The pump just is a machine supporting the heart. And of course, in order for the pump to function, it is needed to have energy, to have batteries, and so uh, the, 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 the energy supply is supported by batteries the patient carry in a bag, uh, uh, on his shoulder or in his, on his belt. And I'm going to show you the first patient we did. And you imagine when we decide that this patient is a candidate for the assist device support, that means his, the longe longevity of his life is just 12 months. And this man you are about to see in a couple of seconds, he is now two years behind his surgical dates. He is doing great. He is bowling, he is shopping, he is traveling, he is doing everything he wants to do. I told you before the pump to function, you need energy. So the, the patient has, and I'll turn a little bit around just to point, this is the uh, little computer Via this, via the monitor, I install whatever I want the pump to do. And these are the batteries connected to the little computer, and the patient carry this together. And every battery lasts six hours, so they can travel and have 12 hours supply. They also have an adapter, so when they are in the car, they can put it into the cigarette uh, thing, <laughs> and they are on energy. Uh, during night time, when they sleep, they plug into the, the, the normal uh, energy source and they can live. So it is, uh, it's a very great invention. We have done now about 16 patients, patients who were waiting for the funeral. No hope. Bedridden many times at home. Couldn't do any much more than just walk from the chair to the, the restroom. That was all. And with the life expectancy, between six and 12 months. And now they are living longer than 12 months. And this is the first gentleman. He is ex sorry, he's telling us how he was by just eating his breakfast, gasping, trying to get enough air, trying to do what he wants to do. And it is the, 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 the second movie at the right side shows you while he is now breathing normal, he is doing his fitness. He is doing whatever he is doing. So I still buy out the legacy my mom left me. Turn your losses into gain. So I'm still trying to fight the battle of heart disease and the losses the patients have done by suffering from, my heart, from heart disease to turn it into gain. Sometimes by medication, or very often by medication, sometimes by specific surgical procedures, like this one. And there is hope a new day has come for many patients. Thank you. <laughs> this is the pump. It is as big as the golf ball and it weighs 140 grams, and it brings life, it brings hope. Thank you.